Hello YouTube, this is Marco or your local watch cardinal back at it again with another video. Uh, of course, I'm sorry for the lack of uploading, but I did want to uh, celebrate whatever holidays you want to call this year's holidays uh, with my family, enjoy the time that I had with them. And uh, yeah, of course, I want to wish you guys a late happy holidays. I'm filming this on December 31st, so the eve of the new year. Uh, looking forward to 2021. Hopefully it will be a lot better than this past year. Uh, so with today's video, I want to present you guys really high, what I feel are high horology watches at a bargain in that five to 15,000 US dollar price range. Now, of course, I'm Canadian. So for me, that's about 6,500 to about 18 to 19,000 given uh, the various rates of exchange that we as Canadians can experience. Now, of course, to filter through this list, I used a number of different kind of categories and things that I'll just present to you. So I'm just going to look down on my notes. I obviously didn't mention any watch from Rolex because, um, yeah, this list doesn't really contain any watches from them. Unfortunately, you just can't get them at retail. And for me, I just don't believe in paying over retail for Rolex. It's just not uh, not the, the position that I feel uh, people should be putting themselves in. Uh, there's no watch brands that are uh, featured that were heavily featured in my sub five hundred sub five thousand dollar video uh, that is also posted already on my channel, namely brands like Panerai, IWC, Omega, um, as well as uh, Breitling and Tudor and Zenith. Uh, I do post two options though from both IWC and from Omega, which I'll get into uh, that I feel are really great bargains and that are really great watches at their price. Uh, no watch brands that I just don't like. It's not necessarily that they're, they're not good brands. Brands like Blancpain, Bobet, Piaget, and Daniel Roth. You can find watches in this price point from these brands. Uh, I just personally don't like the design or the style of their watches. And, and at the end of the day, I make these watches as much for you guys as I do for myself, right? I'm watch shopping kind of at the same time and building myself a history and a, a kind of video history that I can always look back on and say, oh, well, I want to watch at this price point. Well, I, I can, these are my options kind of thing. So again, prices for me is from about 6,500 to about 17 to 20,000. Again, it just depends on the exchange rate. Uh, any case material, so not just steel, but it could also be precious metal, rose gold, yellow gold, uh, and of course, white gold, uh, and a variety of genres. So sports to dress, case sizes typically fell between 38 to 42 millimeters, but some exceptions were made, which I'll obviously point out in the video. And of course, again, as I mentioned in my sub 5000 video, no attention was paid to any kind of investment potential or value retention. I strictly wanted to stick to kind of the horological makeup that these watches kind of signified and were made up of. And so, um, yeah, I just picked the watches that I felt were best at this price point. So uh, customary before we begin, of course, customary with Ross check, I'm wearing my PAM 183, which I just did a review of. Uh, and of course, uh, let's just jump straight into it. So the first watch brand I'd like to recommend is, of course, Arnold & Son, uh, which carries back its kind of history to John Arnold, a uh, famous watch, British watchmaker that's arguably one of the greatest watchmakers of all time. Uh, they make a, a, amazing watches, I find. Uh, obviously, they're finished beautifully. They, they use in-house calibers. Uh, and of course, they're pretty unique in terms of their design language. Uh, so I feel they're really a high horology bargain because oftentimes you could find their watches in steel cases and so you're not paying that kind of precious metal premium. Um, so of course, as I mentioned, these are hand finished watches, fantastic in-house calibers. Uh, the picks that I would go for personally are anything with a guilloche dial uh, in, in either steel or in the precious metals. Uh, I like as well the Nebula, which is kind of an open worked one. Uh, it's a little unique, not to everyone's taste, but personally, I really like it. Those come both in rose gold or in steel. And of course, I like as well the Perpetual Moon, which has this huge uh, kind of moon face uh, that's correct, I think, for 180 years, as long as you keep up with it, which is pretty, pretty incredible. And of course, the movement itself uh, on that watch is simply stunning. So I think anything really from Arnold and Son represents a high horology bargain that you just can't go wrong with. Uh, the next one I would say is Breguet. I think Breguet really dominates this price point. They're among a couple of brands that dominate at this price point. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately for us collectors, uh, Breguet tends to fall a lot on the secondary market. Of course, it's an incredible watch brand uh, with an incredible history. I mean, Abraham Louis Breguet is pretty much unquestionably the greatest watchmaker of all time, a man who was 
way ahead of his time, invented so many things that are, I mean, still used to this day in watchmaking and are typically can't even be replicated. I mean, we just saw this Moritz Grossman automatic winding watch with hammers. You can search it up, of course, if you um, want to get to know more about it. That was an invention by Breguet that hadn't been done, I think, since him because it was just so hard to replicate. So just goes to show you the, kind of the history that this brand uh, comes from. So again, these are handmade watches, high horology uh, complications, high horology movements, high horology finishing. So for me, it's an incredible bang per buck value. I like really anything with the guilloche dial. So the 5177, the 7787, seven, uh, both are great options. But out of the two, I honestly prefer uh, another one, which is the 5277 with the manual wine 96 hour power reserve. I just prefer manual wine watches. Uh, of course, as well as the fact that it has no date is just kind of uh, icing on the cake. I like no day watches, just simple wind and wear watches. So the 5277 for me is a really great bargain. I, saw, I found one for about 15,000 Canadian uh, again, and it was pretty much unworn condition, which is just insane value. Another one that I'd like to point out is the Steel Breguet Marine, which is amazing bank for butt value. Again, you're getting a hand guilloche dial, big day complication, beautiful hand finish movement. It's just fantastic in my opinion. And of course, I have to mention to me, which is the one that I would get personally, which is the 7027. Again, a hand-wound brigade, no date, with kind of a skeletonized dial. Not to everyone's taste, I'll, I'll give you that. However, I do think it is distinctly brigade. It's kind of rep reminiscent of old pocket watches, and that's what I really like about it. It has kind of this old world charm that uh, I just, when I first saw that watch, I fell in love with it. And I feel it represents just an absolutely insane value on the secondary market, considering especially what that watch sells for at retail. Next is Chopard. Uh, Chopard to me has really gone up in terms of their horology. Uh, over the last couple of years, they've really been investing in research and development, as well as improving their, their kind of game, both at the high horology level and kind of the entry level, luxury level. Um, so of course, typically, uh, you want to get the 1.96 movements that are that were made famous by Philip Dufour who praised those movements. Unfortunately, at this price range, you'll have to settle for the 3.96 movements. Now, in terms of their differences, I didn't find much. I know that the 1.96 does have better finishing. It has the Geneva seal, and typically those watches are sold in precious metal cases. But the 3.96 is still a great watch, still hand finish, still beautifully finish. Uh, and of course, the fact that it's still a chronometer I think represents amazing bang per buck value on the secondary market. So I did find one show part that's worth mentioning with the 1.96 movement. Uh, it's from, uh, it's an older model in a 37 millimeter case, which is worth me worth mentioning for those of you who have potentially smaller wrists or if you have bigger wrists and are contemplating that option, just be aware of the sizing because it could be a little bit smaller given it is a dress watch. Uh, and I also like, uh, for me personally, with the 3.96 movement, the LUC XPS 1860 and the Mark III models. I think those are great bang per buck watches. Again, they have a fantastic movement uh, that Philip Dufour, who is arguably one of the best watchmakers in the world today, uh, said is just an absolutely fantastic movement that he highly, highly recommends. So uh, again, I tend to defer to people who are much smarter than me in the hobby. And if Philip Dufour gives his thumbs up or his kind of sign of approval, for a watch or a watch brand, I tend to uh, take notice and uh, definitely would recommend Chopard because of that. The next is Glashuta. Uh, it's another phenomenal brand that I feel really dominates, especially the lower end of this price range. But really anything from them could be uh, justifiable because they just make phenomenally handmade, hand finished watches. Uh, I love personally Glashuta. I think they represent some of the best bank per buck value along with the JLC, because again, you're not paying for that precious metal premium, which I often talk about. Uh, and as well, another thing to mention from Glashuta that differentiates them from kind of every other high horology brand is they're not charging you an arm and a leg for the service costs. Actually, they're very transparent, first of all, with respect to their servicing costs uh, in terms of how much it's gonna cost the consumer. And second off, they're actually fairly reasonable considering the watch that you have. I mean, again, these are hand finished, hand decorated in-house calibers, and they're charging you, you know, on the low end, the $400 to the higher end. I mean, you can obviously pay more, but in terms of in this price range, you're probably going to pay somewhere in the range of 
seven to seven hundred to a thousand dollars, which again, that's pretty reasonable. You're not getting a service from these kind of in-house calibers from kind of the high horology brands that I just mentioned, like Breguet and, and the likes that I'll mention in later in the video. So to me, Glashuta represents an amazing option. Personally, I really like the Pano Inverse. It's a watch I've contemplated adding to my collection many times. And again, the value uh, retention for Glashuta in particular isn't very good on the secondary market. So we as collectors can definitely benefit from them. The other one that I like is really anything from their Excellence collection, but I like in particular the Senator Excellence Panorama Date with the blue dial. This has actually the Caliber 36, which has a 100 hour power reserve. It's again an in-house caliber that they manufactured, I believe back in 2016. And so it's just for me a, a high horology movement that again is hand finished, 100 hour power reserve, which is, I mean, pretty unheard of uh, considering the level of finish and attention to detail in this watch. And again, you're getting it in a steel case, so you're not paying a precious metal premium and the service costs are very, very reasonable. So I think those are just great options. Next is H. Moser. Again, another phenomenal watch brand uh, that is making great bang per buck uh, value watches, but they have started to rise in value. So uh, again, be wary of that. And I would definitely recommend if you're looking uh, to get a H. Moser, get into the market now, as opposed to later when it probably will be a little bit more cost prohibitive. So at this price point, you're going to tend to get kind of stuff from the Ventura, the Endeavor, and the Pioneer collections. Uh, and so, again, these are great watches, hand-finished watches. They are in precious metal, so you are paying a precious metal premium. But H. Moser is a fantastic brand. Uh, they make almost all the components in their watches. And, of course, they're hand-finished, hand-decorated, in-house calibers. So really, we're, we're talking high horology at a bargain once again. Um, you can also get uh, the new blue watch from Moser with the Luminova indices that I'll pop up on screen. Uh, that's another fantastic watch. It has a pretty funky design and I like it. I think it's a cool kind of everyday sports dress watch. Uh, and I don't know, the design is unlike really anything you see kind of in the watch industry because of those carved out Luminova uh, indices on the dial. Next is Havering. Again, excellent watches with supremely accurate movements from the watchmaker Richard Havering. Uh, and his wife, who was part of his team. Uh, they make fantastic bank per buck value watches, again, because you're not paying that precious metal premium. Uh, they use in-house calibers. Now they do source their components from various parts, but they've created a, net, a network of kind of uh, sourcing for their parts, which allows their watch price to actually be fairly reasonable. And of course, again, you're getting supremely accurate watches because Richard Habring is a master watchmaker, an excellent watchmaker who gained a lot of notoriety I believe it was in the 90s and 2000s for his work with IWC. And he makes really, really accurate movements based, I believe, on the Valjoux 7750 because he thought it to be a workhorse movement, something that you can highly modify. But when ETA kind of stopped uh, giving out those movements, he went and created his own in-house caliber, kind of designed with respect to the Valjoux 7750, but added his kind of own, own design element, elements. So we're talking again, in-house calibers that are finished in-house sure they're not decorated to the nines like some of these other watches that i mentioned but they're still fantastic bank per buck value in my opinion uh, so for me my favorites are the felix collection in particular the felix chronograph with the simon dial but again anything from habring to me is excellent value because you're just getting a, a handmade watch from one of the best watchmakers really in the world so high horology at a bargain once again IWC. So as I mentioned, IWC is not really a brand I would recommend at this price point. I think they, I think they tend to dominate kind of that sub 5,000 and the price range above that, uh, above this one, where they, you kind of get into their annual calendars and their perpetual calendars that I, I personally really like, especially the Portuguese perpetuals, but they won't be at these price range. The one watch that I would recommend in this price range is the IWC Portuguese with a seven day power reserve. I like in particular the one with the silver dial with the blue indices. These can be picked up at a great value. And again, you're getting an in-house movement, seven day power reserve, which is I think pretty utilitarian. And of course, it's just fantastic bang per buck value overall, steel case, so it's super wearable and you're not paying that precious metal premium. I would definitely recommend you picking it up uh, this watch if of course you're looking to get it. Next is JLC. Uh, again, I don't need to go on about JLC. To me, they represent arguably the best bang per buck value uh, on the watch market today. 
we're talking about the watchmaker's watchmaker. Uh, so really, I think you can't go wrong with anything from JLC. Uh, the first watch I feel is worth mentioning is the JLC uh, Polaris. I like in particular the blue dial. Uh, this has a vertical clutch. It's a column wheel chronograph with excellent movement finishing and a tungsten rotor. So you're getting uh, really a lot of horology for a pretty significant discount on the secondary market. And again, it's in steel, so you're not paying precious metal premium. Uh, and these are all complications, kind of the vertical clutch column wheel chronograph, uh, and it's automatic on top of that, lest we forget, that you're gonna ha you're only gonna find from other brands at significantly higher price points. So I think it's fantastic value. Um, my favorite, again, is the blue dial one, but you can also find them in black dial for even better, uh, better prices. The Reverso is a model that you have so many options to choose from. Uh, personally, I think the annual calendar version that I'm going to pop up on screen represents really the best value. And the fact that you can see the movement it, to me is really icing on the cake. Uh, and of course, you're paying less than 10,000 Canadian for a, an annual calendar. I mean, that's just unheard of, especially considering the cachet and the history that JLC has. And the last JLC model that I'd like to recommend is the JLC True Second. This has an interesting deadbeat second that I personally really, really like. Uh, it's not a complication that you actually see in automatic watches all too often. In fact, you really only see them in watches with a very uh, complex device called the Remontoir, which is a constant force device. And uh, I think it's really interesting. I think it's really cool. Uh, to me, I wouldn't buy it personally, but I think it's definitely worth recommending given how significant the complication is. And of course, given how incredibly finished the movement is again, and you're getting this watch really at a huge discount just because people unfortunately don't really like JLC and JLC is pretty soft. And uh, unfortunately, JLC just doesn't retain value the way that some of these other brands do. Next is uh, Elange and Zone, a watch brand that I feel is, uh, I mean, among the best in the world. My grail is the Rose Gold Lanka One with the silver dial. Um, you can't really find watches at this price point. I did find one that's slightly above this price point, so I feel it's worth mentioning. It's the 1815 with a small second in the bigger size. Again, this is an excellent watch with excellent movement finishing and in-house caliber. So if you're willing to stretch a little, I think it's definitely worth mentioning. Uh, next is Parmigiani. So again, this is a watch brand that I featured in my sub $5,000 video. I'm gonna recommend kind of the same model, the Parmigiani Tonda 1950, this time in rose gold. Again, I found a model that is less than 10, or at about 10,000 Canadian for a rose gold watch with a micro rotor movement which is finished in-house, hand finish. Uh, I mean, you just can't beat that in my opinion, especially considering you're getting a precious metal case and you're getting an in-house movement that is finished to the nines all by hand. So I think that's excellent bang for buck value. That's certainly worth mentioning. Again, personally, I would get the steel version, but I think that the rose gold version is also definitely worth mentioning. Next is Patek Philippe. Now you're not gonna find many options from Patek Philippe at this uh, kind of price point. And in fact, uh, you hardly ever see them, but they do come up every once in a while. Uh, so just be aware of those if you're ever looking for it. I did find one Calatrava. Now it's a 36 millimeter Calatrava. So it's definitely a little bit smaller maybe for some wrists, but don't forget that Patek Philippe does tend to wear bigger on the wrist. Uh, I do really like this watch, hobnail bezel. It also has a see-through case back, which I really like. Uh, obviously I buy these watches to see the movement. Uh, so it's always nice when you can do that. And again, Patek Philippe is arguably, I mean, the most prestigious brand in all of watches. So you really can't go wrong if you get a watch from them. Next is Omega. So again, not a watch brand that I would typically recommend at this price point. I think you should really stick to that sub $5,000 range when it comes to Omega. But I do like the Omega Speedmaster Apollo 11 50th anniversary. I think that first and foremost, uh, it's an amazing watch uh, with the kind of uh, gold alloy in the bezel and the bezel insert. The bezel insert, of course, is made from ceramic, and I find that that Speedmaster bracelet is actually the nicest Speedmaster bracelet and the most comfortable one I've ever tried on personally. And last but not least, it's also the only Speedmaster, or the first Speedmaster, uh, rather, that has the 3861 caliber. So I think uh, that is, of course, the 3861 caliber is, of course, a MEDAS certified and a, a chronometer. So you're getting uh, an amazing watch, I feel, at the price that it's being sold at currently. It was definitely worth picking up if you're looking for one. The next is Roger Dubuis. Uh, I don't really love Roger Dubuis. I think his designs are pretty eclectic if I'm being honest with you, 
but it is an amazing watch brand. Obviously, Roger Dubuis was the now late Roger Dubuis, may rest in peace, of course, um, was famous for working with Patek Philippe for a number of years. Then he went off and kind of did his own thing. The one that I do like that I found at this price range was the Monegasque or Monegasque, I think it's pronounced. It's a fantastic watch, again, hand finished from an expert watchmaker and an ex uh, who kind of went off and did his own brand, his independent brand. And of course, you're getting really a, a, an amazing watch that I feel is, has a really kind of des interesting design story, it, given the fact that it took design cues from a roulette wheel. And again, obviously, the movement is just fantastically finished, in-house caliber from Roger Dubuis, so you just can't go wrong. The last brand worth mentioning to me is the uh, is Vacheron Constantin. Now, of course, Vacheron is a brand that is tends to be overlooked by watch collectors. And so on the secondary market, it does tend to tank in terms of its value. Uh, so you can find many watches from them at their price range. Personally, I really only like two. Uh, I like the older model overseas. I think those recommend uh, those represent great bank per buck value on the secondary market. You can certainly pick those up in that sub kind of uh, in, in within this price range at the very least. And of course, the other one personally that I really like and I, I would pick up for myself is the rose gold Vacheron Constantin Patrimony 38 millimeter case, which I feel is perfect for a dress watch. Of course, you're getting a hand wound movement time only watch that's finished, of course, to the nines by Vacheron Constantin. And it has a 65 hour power reserve with a single barrel. Uh, it's a movement that was complemented by the person I feel is I mean, the greatest watchmaker in the world, that is Kerry Voodelainen. Uh, and so I think definitely represents a watch that collectors should be looking out for. And it's an amazing value given how much it tanks on the resale value. So these are just my recommendations. If you have any, of course, feel free to leave some in the comments down below. This is definitely a longer video. So if you did make it to the end, I do appreciate it. It's an, I just want to invite you guys, of course, to like the video, to subscribe for more videos in the future. Uh, this is uh, the last video of 2020. I hope to see you guys in 2021. Uh, and uh, I appreciate all the support. And thank you again for watching this video. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao. Thanks again.